Hello and welcome back to Gecko Tech and Gaming. Now that I've given the Sim 2 a little bit more time in game and in testing, I'd like to review some of its performance stats as well as some bugs that I found while using it. Put it through its paces in Kovacs. I actually found it felt really good in terms of ergonomics. Um, Performance-wise, sensor-wise, it was hitting a lot of shots. I actually broke my personal high score twice with this mouse in Kovacs, so very much like it. In terms of latency, what I found was between the office mode and the gaming mode, there wasn't any real meaningful difference performance-wise. Sensors seemed to perform the same way, and latency was pretty much the same between the two. I put it through lacing test four or five times, and couldn't find any really significant differences between the two. Went ahead and did some latency tests with the Viper Mini as well to get a wired comparison and no big changes. I couldn't find any significant differences between the latency of the Sim 2 in office and gaming mode as well as the wired Viper Mini. And let's take a look at a little bit of gameplay that I got while using the Sim 2 in wireless mode. I hope that, uh, that C4 throw was so uh, sad. Yeah, that wasn't going to be what I thought. All right. No, the loadout's done. Good uh. soldier. Win here, and you return to the front line. But if you lose, you lose. Okay. Sort them out or capture the objective. Uh. Oh, my. I downed five people on this roof, and every single person saw for five. I downed two. What the heck? Oh, I went for it. Oh man, that's just terrible. Nah. Stop bailing on the gun. I'm coming! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Mark, call for fire. I'm gonna go back loadout. I'm gonna Enemy go back loadout somewhere <laughs> yeah. yeah, go do that. Thank you. Wait, what? Oh, wow. The guy that downed me was on prison shooting on there. Friendly UAV overhead. Anybody got extra shield? Got gas inbound. Safe zone is located. Wow. Oh my god, they laser nice. Heck yeah. Now, on to the problems that I found. One with the lighting. Uh, what I found was that if you turn it off for anything more than two, three minutes or so, it will forget the lighting settings that you put in. I like to turn it off just to conserve battery power overnight or in between uses. Don't waste battery. Uh, so what I found was leaving it off, it'll always revert to the uh, rotating this rainbow color. So that's kind of a bummer if you want to have a specific color or you want to match it with your setup. The biggest issue I found, and take this with a grin of salt, because it only happened once and as hard as I tried, I actually couldn't get it to happen again. But what I found was it forgot all of my settings reverted all the DPI settings back to their default, even though I only run two DPI settings, forgot the lighting, and it even forgot the debounce time settings. Now, this seems just like it could be fixed by a firmware update, but still something to consider if you want to buy something this expensive. All the other performance, though, performed just as well as other mice in the same price bracket. Now, I use the mouse on a sky pad as well as a cloth pad i used it on the cooler master mp i think it's the 311 811 it's their new version of their cordura mouse pad um and on both of them felt really good the skates here you're not going to need to replace them honestly 
Uh, the only bummer is that with a lot of mice nowadays, they seem to be adding backup replacement skates along with them. Um, this one didn't include them. You'd have to go on their website to buy an extra pair of skates to go with this. Uh, I really like these though. Very smooth, worked really well on the glass sky pad as well as the cloth MP511. It was good. I really like these skates too. The switches, the clicks are great. I love the switches, very tactile. They sound really nice. Even the side buttons, like they're not bad. They feel really good compared to the usual side buttons that you find on mice, which tend to be really squishy. These have just a tiny bit of pre-travel, but really not bad when you compare them to other gaming mice around the same price sometimes. Uh, these feel really nice. So overall, would I recommend the Ponage Sim 2? Yes, but with those caveats with the cons. Um, every product is gonna have pros and cons, and this one is no different. For sure, the big thing for me is the driver and the lighting. Uh, those are a real pain in the butt. And erasing the settings, it again, it only happened once for me. I tried to mess with the switch back and forth on and off, go between office and gaming mode repeatedly really fast, and I couldn't seem to get it to happen again. So it seems like it was a really weird fluke. Uh, I have been using this for exactly one week now. I only had to recharge it yesterday. Uh, so yesterday was a full seven days. So seven days of use, uh, I got down to about 20% when I needed to charge it. That's not bad. Now, granted, that's with me using it mostly in office mode as well as turning it off in between uses. So your mileage may vary depending on how you handle that power usage. Thanks a ton for stopping by and watching the video. Until next time, stick around, take care, be blessed. Y'all have a good one, okay?